I am. My name is Steffi and I am an equine scientist and equine sports and rehabilitation massage therapist. I've done my BSc and MSc in equine science in the UK and I really hope that I can show you a few things and share with you a lot of things that will help you and your horse gain a better connection. <laughs> Why is horse-human connection so important? It's really important that you actually know your horse before you do anything with your horse. Um, in this case, we have my four-year-old gelding Rubio. He is a Spanish cruzado and I've only owned him for two months, but he's already shown some signs of unevenness and he's come up slightly unsound. So I want you to share this journey with me so that you can figure out ways that you can help your horse maybe become more sound, maybe understand your horse better. But in the end, everything is going to serve your horse human connection and it's going to help you build a better bond with your horse. The first thing I always want to do whenever I assess a horse that I don't know, I mean, in this case, I know him, but um, the first thing I always do is I just, <laughs> I start grooming and I start interacting on the ground. And so in this case, I want you to see what I do and how I look at his body whilst I'm grooming him. Because I think the first step you can do is already whilst you're actually cleaning your horse in a way that is actually nice for him. Um, giving him a little massage, but at the same time gives you a lot of insight on what's going on in his body. So let's go with that. The first thing I always use is a rubber curry comb. I make sure it's a really soft rubber. So... <laughs> He already shows me where he likes to be groomed, what he likes me to do, um, but I obviously start at the front of the horse. So, Romeo, let's just turn around for a second. Come on. Wait. There we go. So, we start with the curry comb just behind the pole or on the pole, and we go in circular movements, and we move our way from his head towards his shoulders and your horse will tell you pretty quickly how much pressure he or she likes in this case there can't be enough pressure um, and then i move my way across the shoulders see what he says to that he's okay with it i move towards his hind end nope <laughs> And I pay particular attention to the area that the saddle um, sits on. You can see he was clipped. That was done before my time, but it gives you a nice indicator of where you should pay attention to your horse. I also always like to have one hand that's not holding the brush on my horse so I can feel if he's got um, some movement going, if he's twitching, if his muscles are twitching, if there is anything that I should pay attention to. So, um, so that's why you can see me always holding him um, in one place. Obviously, also do his belly. See what he says to that. He used to have some issues with that, but apparently that's okay now. We're good, he says. We're good. <laughs> and in this area, I like to try and increase my pressure. He obviously is showing me something's going on in this area, which is really nice, I think. If your horse is showing you where he or she wants to be groomed, pay attention to that because they're telling you for a reason. He obviously can't help himself in this case, so it's my job to look and to see what he wants me to do. So he obviously, aha, uh -huh, so he obviously wants me to be in this area. So I'm just using this curry comb and um, I'm doing smaller circles. <laughs> Like his shoulder to be groomed, that's nice. Okay, so his left shoulder, he likes that, his weather area. He wants to groom me back, that's nice. You can go along the back and see what's happening there. He just started twitching when um, I was in his lumbar area, so I really just want to see his reaction towards what I'm doing. Okay, so that was the left side, that's just the prep. Now we're going to do the right side as well. Something else I look at is his mane. So you can see there is a bit of a parting going on in this area and in this area. And from my experience, I can tell you that that actually isn't normal. So if the majority of his mane is on the left, it should all be on the left because that indicates to me that he's hollow on his left. But if he is 
if, oh, if the main is split, um, just like it is here, then normally there is some tension on his right in the neck somewhere. And it's my job to loosen that. You might wonder how I do that. And actually, if you don't know anything about massage therapy or anything of the sort, and you don't want to get out a physiotherapist for your horse every time, use your curry comb because it's, it's quite a flexible rubber. You can actually do something with it and you can just start your work here again. And this would help him stretch out a little bit. You can see his reaction on this side is much different to the other side. He wants to take a closer look at what I'm doing, which is fine. Obviously, this isn't done in one single session. This is something that you have to do over time. But I'm pretty sure if we keep going with this and if we keep going with a massage every day or every time I interact with him, it doesn't have to be every day. It's OK if it's just a few times a week um, or every time before you tack up your horse or every time you groom your horse whilst it's eating or whatever it's doing. Um, I'm pretty sure that we can actually help our horses with very little. We just have to see what's going on. So he's obviously more keen on his hind end being scratched today. And that's okay by me. I'm going to continue showing you um, what's happening on his right side. But first he needs a bum scratch. So let's go with that. <laughs> Something else that you might wonder is why is it okay for me that my horse keeps going around in circles, keeps going forward, backwards and pushing me to his hind end and then parking um, back up, backing up to me and parking me in. I think it's okay because I want this to be a dialogue. So in this case, if I was to put him in a cross tie, left, right, um, of course he couldn't move and he couldn't, he couldn't fidget, but at the same time, he also couldn't express. In this case, yes, he might fidget around a little bit. He's four years old, bear that in mind. He's really kind. He's not the most gentle with his body, but he can still learn that. <laughs> he can still learn that. He is a kind horse. There is no need for him to actually hit me or do anything of the sort. I think you want this. Is that possible? You want all of it. Um, yeah, so he's actually just showing me what he wants me to do. There? Here. So we're just communicating. Yes, he is a fidget bum, but he's allowed to be because I'd rather him be this way then be half dead like a zombie, parking up, not communicating with me. And also this is a spot that he really cannot reach himself. So why not help him out and do him a favor in this case? He's obviously clearly enjoying it. So there's nothing bad about that. If you trust your horse, if you trust yourself, obviously don't put yourself in a position that you feel uncomfortable in. But in this case, I'm doing him a favor. Also, something else that's really important, which my friend Svea just pointed out to me, is by knowing his behaviors, like all of his behavior range, I also know when he's out of his normal behavior range. So this is also the reason why I was able to tell that he's slightly unsound, because he was behaving in a way that wasn't normal for him. This is normal for him, and it's okay to be expressive in that way. <laughs> I'm completely okay with that. but. Um, Oh, there is actually a little lump here. So something must have bitten him down here. There's quite a lump going on and it seems to be super itchy. So he couldn't reach it himself. How the hell would he get between his, <laughs> between his bum cheeks? Let's call him that. Um, so yeah, we are just getting to know each other. But now we're going to continue with some more brushing. Sorry, boy. <laughs> So we've just done his left and then he's had some extensive bum scratches going and now we're going to look at his right side. There are a few things that I know um, that he's struggling with in his body. As you can tell, he's got quite a short neck. He's quite a short coupled horse in general. So we're just going to look on his right side and we've just done his neck. So we're just going to have a look on his back as well. He's already telling me stick with the shoulders, which is nice, nice indication. I know that there is something going on in his shoulders, um, in his right shoulder, in fact, and he's obviously quite taken with this. So I'm just going to stay with that for a little while. And he's really enjoying that. I just don't know if you can see his face. Let's do it from this angle. 
can see his face. And I like the fact that he's actually showing me what he wants me to do. <laughs> Always, all of my horses have the choice and all of them choose bum scratches over anything. Something else that you cannot see right now, but maybe can see in a minute is that he's always relaxing his left hind. Um, if he gets a chance, he's relaxing his left hind. Not right now anymore, of course, but um, that's something he tends to do. So it's, it's genuinely, generally speaking, always the left. So we're looking at his back now. And I know that he's quite um, tender to the touch in his lumbar area over here. Um, but also as we go down his croup, we will find that he also tends to twitch or flinch a little bit. And um, obviously bum scratches are always key to success. <laughs> he definitely showed us earlier that he wants those bum scratches because there's something going on. We found um, an insect bite down here somewhere where he can't reach, so I've helped him with that. But what I'm interested in is his back. <laughs> his back and his lumbar area right now because his lameness to me sits on his left hind and in his right front somewhere. Most horses will show lameness or signs of lameness in one of their limbs but because they are a quadruped you will always have a diagonal response in the body. So when his right uh, front leg is affected, you will always find something in his left hind as well. So I'm just going to try and dust him off a little bit so I can show you something that you can do with your horse to figure out if the back is um, tender to the touch, if there is some tightness, some tension going on. And that's something really easy. You can't go wrong with that. There is nothing you can do to hurt it. You could hurt your horse, of course, always, if you go too strong, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but you can't do much wrong with this. I can't go wrong. So, so something you can always do for your horse is use your hands. You could also use a curry comb like we've just done, but that I always see as the prep work. Um, use your hands and just run them uh, behind his shoulder blades, run them down, and then run them up again. And very soon you will find out if your horse is tight somewhere, if there is some tension somewhere, um, their muscles will react. So now you could see, I'm not sure if you could see, I hope you could see, that um, his long back muscle was actually reacting over here. So what you can do there is just hold it. I'm just doing very, very, very gentle touches here because I know but he's actually chewing and licking already and he's showing me where he wants to scratch. So that's okay for me. That's his, his way of showing me that was actually a lot for me. He does that during interaction every time he's overwhelmed by something. So we're just going to take it in really small steps. Obviously, you could now overdo it. That's what I mean about um, you can't hurt him, but you, you always need to watch your horse as a whole. Um, so if he tells me now this is actually too much for me, can't cope, we're going to stop. We're going to do, next time we're going to do some more. Um, we're going to take it in small steps, just the way he can actually cope with. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Walking away is okay for me here. Um, I'm still really gently touching and holding my pressure, but uh, walking away is already a sign of something's going on. But as you can see from his facial expression, he's feeling into his body, he's relaxing. Um, and he's just kind of paying attention to what I'm doing. And you don't always have to wait for a reaction, for a response. Sometimes it's good to just keep going, but obviously if your horse tells you, this is actually a lot for me right now, then we're gonna stop now. So he's just using ways to show me, actually this is stressing me out. This is a lot for me to take in. He's only little. I know he's four years old, but four-year-old horses don't have to know a lot of things, technically, right? They have to know themselves, and most of all, I want him to trust me. I want him to know that I'm not going to hurt him, so we're just going to take it in baby steps, and apparently that's the way to go with him. So pay attention to your horse, because if you were to go over that, 
um, limit that he's showing you now, next time you want to touch him, maybe he's going to fidget even more. Maybe he is not willing to cooperate. Maybe he doesn't want to come um, because he's going to memorize what we're doing here. So if I just take it in really small steps, I'm going to do him a favor. So we always want to do both sides equally. So it's really important. Now we've been on the right side to look just in the back area. We're going to do the same thing on the left. So I'm just going to run my hands down and run them up again. And like I said, I just use really gentle pressure here. He's already licking and chewing. Already licking and chewing. And obviously this is a spot. <laughs> So his reaction right now, you see him rocking forward and backward. This is really, really nice for him. <laughs> this is something that he also cannot do himself. So it's my job to help him out. Obviously, just imagine if you were to ride this horse now, and obviously he's he's got some muscular tension going on. He may well start bucking and throwing you off, not because he's a nasty horse, but because he's got something going on here and it's particularly towards the hind end of the saddle towards the lumbar area that he experiences this tension i can feel it obviously you can't see or can't feel what i'm feeling but i can feel it but his response is enough for me in this case to show me that there is something going on here so every time i groom him i want to pay close attention to this Obviously, I want to give him some exercises that help him with his body, not cause more issues over here. So we've just done his back. And now, um, obviously, this was just really short, but this is something you can do yourself every time you groom your horse, every time you prepare him for riding. And now you can do the same thing with his hindquarters. And I like to um, always do either use my hand or, or use a curry comb, but always do something like a star going from... Um, his hip joint to all sides and just feeling into his body, seeing what he's doing, um, see his reaction towards it, see if he flinches somewhere, if a muscle twitches, if you can see like here um, that he's holding on in the moment. Um, so I just have an idea of what is going on in his body because if all goes well, if everything's well, there is no actual response his muscle tone should be um, quite firm but at the same time relaxed so every time I touch him like this shouldn't matter so walking away <laughs> and now again he wants more pressure walking away um, and fidgeting around that's also a way of showing me something's happening inside here um, and it's my job to listen so that's what we're doing right now Obviously, again, same thing on the other side. So find the hip joint somewhere. It's usually around the middle. Um, and then take it in star shapes and go towards um, all angles. And this is a good spot, he says. <laughs> Interesting. always pay attention to his face pay attention to his body if you see any signs of resistance or even pain stop immediately and um, find someone who can help with it okay i'm not saying that you ought to become a massage therapist i'm just showing you ways of what you can do how you can do it and how easy it can actually be this is something that every horse usually really enjoys and we have more exercises like that for his neck as well he obviously really enjoys a good old bum scratch. <laughs> and this thing down here seems to be really itchy today. So I'm going to go with that for a little longer. So um, these were just a few little things that you can do on each grooming or during each grooming session um, with your horse. But obviously, now that we've seen he's got some tension, there is also more to it. So the next step is to work him in a way that helps him release the tension in his body, um, either me doing some body work on him or working him on the ground rather than riding him. 
and then um, we can see what's going from there. Also, something I find quite important is if he's living out like he is in this case, um, just soon after we're doing our work, he's going to get rugged up again. So he's warm. Um, we all can relate to that. If we have some tight muscles, we like to take a hot bath or we like to snuggle up somewhere. Um, just imagine that and then think of your horse next time. Um, so whenever you ride your horse or work your horse and you find that there is some tension or even if your horse feels slightly sweaty, just do them a favor and give them the time to cool down or um, keep them warm. Okay, that's that for today. If you have any questions, obviously there is an option you can contact me and we can talk about your individual situation with your horse. Um, if you have any questions, you can also drop them in the comments. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed that.